Welcome to this premiere. Today, we are going to be talking about the 2021 hurricane season. First video about this, Colorado State University have released their first percentages, stats, predictions, same as the, the tropical risk agency or the tropical cyclone risk agency or something like that. So, the job. So we will start with this. So the 2021 hurricane season will feature Ben. Yes, yeah, so it hasn't started yet. See, season not started. Season not started. Unknown, unknown. Because it's there. And sorry for any. And guys. Yeah. Sorry about that. And sorry for any non-wanted notifications noises and interruptions and stuff like that. Anyway, TSR! So yeah, TSR. The tropical... The tropical... I don't know. Anyway, so December 9th, 2020. They're predicting 60 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. The average is 12.1 her named storms, 6.4 hurricanes, 2.7 major hurricanes. Record high activity, 30 for hurricanes, which is, of course, this hurricane season. 15 and 7 for major hurricanes and hurricanes, which was 2005. The names will be Anna, Bill, Claudette, Danny, Elsa, Fred, Grace, Henry, Ida, Julian, Kate, Larry, Mindy, Nicholas, Odette, Peter, Rose, Sam, Teresa, Victor, and Wanda. And the main factors behind their prediction is due to an unexpected development of a weak La Nina. So, you might be wondering, what do you mean development? We're in a La Nina right now. Well, this La Nina will die and go into a, most likely a La Nina side neutral. And then the La Nina, and then the temperatures in the Pacific will go down in the Eastern Pacific more. And then uh, in, in around, I think, August to November, a La Nina will develop. So, yeah. We're also going to do models of... I'm gonna go to the can sips. I'm gonna go to the world, and I'm going to go to SS Tianom. So I'm gonna use this, the model for SS Tianom, is going till November next year, which we're gonna use. So the Atlantic gets three quiet hurricane seasons. From 2013 to 2015, followed by slightly above average season 2016, near record breaking levels of activity in 2017, slightly above average seasons in 2018 and 2019, and an extremely active hurricane season in 2020. Five above average seasons lend confidence that the aim over remains in a positive phase. Which means, well, okay, I'm not going to say that, but what they're trying to say is that since we've already had five about our hurricane seasons, we're expecting that to stay, and they're expecting 2021 to also be an above average hurricane season, is what it is what they're trying to say. It just it needed to get that out of the way. Because he, you should know that. Anyway, <clears throat> so North Atlantic is generally being characterized by below average seasons temperatures, especially during the winter. Another big question, and, and that's in the Eastern Pacific. The other question, another big question for 2021 is how El Nino Southern Oscillation, and, aka ENTA, will trend over the next few months, as in typically in the case of this time of year. There is considerable model disagreement as to what the phase event so will look like in summer, fall of 2021. But 2020 um, hurricane season, we anticipate five possible scenarios, which the probability of each indicated on the next page. So let's go to that. Here is the probabilities. So, if you look at here, you're seeing that an El Nino is not likely to develop because the two highest chances 
the 35 and 25 percent chance. Now again, they're not like really far apart because like we're still in December. But so, so you see, um, you see, um, so, um, so you see, three of the scenarios have an El Nino not developing, and two of the scenarios have it developing. So the El Nino develops. So yeah, so yeah, and the highest. So three. So most scenarios don't have an El Nino developing, and the highest chance scenarios are no El Nino developing. So twenty five percent chance. AMO becomes very strong in twenty twenty one, and no El Nino occurs, resulting in a seasonal average accumulated cyclone energy ACE activity. And it doesn't mean like this is the average. No, this is not the average ACE, but this is like what it would happen. Like, but it's not the average ACE of a hurricane season. Activity of 170. 25% chance. Now, it's now again, the percentages are close because so far away. The highest chance, the 35% chance. AMO is above average and no El Nino occurs, ACE 130. That is a tiny bit above average. The average ace of a hurricane season is 100, so 130 ace would be maybe kind of like 2019 or another slightly to moderately above average hurricane season. Or, yeah. So, like, that that would be like 2019 where we had 19 name storms. So, it would be like a couple storms above average, like 15 to 19 name storms or something. And then a, a little a little to moderately above average hurricanes and major hurricanes. So, yeah. 130 ace. Average ace is 100, so 130 ace would be a little bit. Would, bleh, no. Average hurricane season ace is 100 is 100 ace. So 130 ace would be above average, and most likely in storm strengths, hurricanes, major hurricanes, and tropical storms. So yeah, above average and no El Nino occurs. Ace 130, and again, the average ace of a hurricane season, an average hurricane season, and again, an average hurricane season has 12. Um, 12.1 named storms, somewhere around six hurricanes, and, um, um, and, uh, two to 2.7 major hurricanes. That's an average season. Again, 12.1 named storms, around six hurricanes, and 2.7 major hurricanes, average hurricane season for the Atlantic show. And so, and again, the average ace for a hurricane season is for an average average hurricane season ace is 100 so so if if so if we had an average season with that amount of storms because that's an average season we probably have really close to that or to or exactly that ace so yeah now we have amo is above average and only you develop that's only a 20 percent chance and the ace would be 80 which is 20 below average amo is below average and no el nino occurs 10% chance. Now, what that means is no El Nino occurs, but hurricane season is still below average in the Atlantic. Now, that is only a 10% chance, while it being above average is 35% chance. Highest chance. Most likely, that scenario. And most below average in El Nino developed. That is 50. That is like 2015. That is most likely not going to happen. Very likely not going to happen. Typical seasons was above average list at East Valley's at TCS Falls. 178. 14 to 17 named storms. That is a lot of named storms. That is, um, and again, the average named storms is 12. So the average named storms in a hurricane season is 12. The average hurricane is 6. And the average major hurricane is 3. No, not 2. It's not 3. 2 to 3. Yeah, 2.7 to be that. So yeah, 14 to 17, that is 2 to 5 above average. 9 to 11 hurricanes, that is 3 to 5 above average. 4 to 5 major hurricanes, that is 2 to 3 above average. Under 38, which is the most likely scenario, 12 to 15 named storms. That is average named storms to 3 above average, which is bad. Uh, 6 to 8 hurricanes, which is average to 2 above average. Um... And two to three major hurricane, which is average. And two to three major hurricanes is bad. Still bad. Like, for example, I'm pretty sure in 2015 we only had one major hurricane, yeah. But it was still bad, so yeah. Ace 80. 8 to 11 named storms, which are all about below average. 
three to five hurricanes, all below average. One to two major hurricanes, a little bit below average. <laughs> Fifty eight, which is five to seven named storms, three to hurricane, zero to one major hurricane. That's really unlikely because that's less active than twenty fifteen. Extremely unlikely. So the A Sounder Thirty scenario is the most likely scenario, and I think I, if. It, and if I were to make my predictions, now 130 A's, I would say we would have 140 A's. I would say we might have like 15 named storms, seven hurricanes, and I would say four major hurricanes. Or that. So yeah, it doesn't have to have all the characteristics of like 130 A's, but at least have some of the characteristics. So Dr. William Gray, Creevies, uh, yeah. And, um,. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down um, on here. Okay, so we've been seeing climatology standards. This is, by the way, this is neutral. This is an El Nino side neutral, and this is a La Nina side neutral. And for 2021 hurricane season, we're most likely going to have a La Nina side neutral, most likely, and also a weak La Nina. So, yeah, so yeah, we've been seeing trends where we've been having lots of La Nina's. But again, but you can really tell by past hurricane seasons like this far, far back. Because, for example, 1914, both. And Atlantic were extremely inactive. In fact, 1914, Atlantic only had one named storm, and I'm pretty sure Eastern Pacific didn't have any. I don't know. But that just goes to tell you how much global warming and ocean temps have rised. So, yeah, and then we've had some strong El Ninos, but El Ninos are becoming less um, common as. You, um, because we've been having bigger dips in on the too. So yeah, they're not. Well, here's the problem. You can't really act. In my opinion, actually, you can't really have less on the years or on And here's the reason: even if one's cooling down in the on ocean, the other one's warming up. So yeah, 2012. So yeah, we see. Yeah. Two thousand, and then we see in two thousand uh, five, if I can find it. Two thousand four. Okay. Okay, that's not correct. Now this ain't correct because um, no, because there's no way two thousand five had a very strong El Nino. There's no way. unless this is for oh, unless this is for the Atlantic, and then that would be correct. So yeah, these are some average passes. So and so, well, no, these are not passes. My bad. So we have ocean currents that affects how hurricanes go. Then we have trade winds, SSTs, hurricanes, and so SSTs. Yes, yeah, so all of this affects how hurricanes. So yeah, I don't know what that means. Here we go. So this is what I really want to look at. Uh, these are the AMO injections. January 2014, we have had some a good amount. You see, we've had less and less. We've had less and less um, El Ninos in this past uh, six years. You see, see. Yeah, so you see, we've had less and less, and then we've had a good amount. But not a lot. So, oh, sorry about that. I'm in the bathroom. I'm not going to the bathroom, but because um, if I'm not in here, then somebody's gonna annoy me. Like, ah, get over here. I'm sorry. Anyway, this won't affect hurricanes a lot. A lot of people think it will. Nope, it's all the way up here. There's no. There's usually never a hurricane forming up here. Or if it makes it up here, it's post-tropical or dead or picked up by a cold front or something. So it won't affect it a lot, but North Atlantic Ocean. Black Box highlights the region where SSTs are measured for the S7. No, 
Colorado State University ammo index. So yeah, uh, that um, so it's gonna expand a little bit uh, down, but gonna, but that's it pretty much. It's gonna keep going down. Oh wait, never mind. No, this is climatology stuff. So this is January to March 2014 to 2020 minus 1955 to 2012. So it's kind of like uh, an average, you know. So you know what's weird about this? We've had we were having above average, a lot of above average here, 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 but below here. Sorry about that, guys, but I am back. Anyway, so let's continue. So yeah, you didn't even notice anything, cause oh uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, um, so yeah, um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it'd be called, and I cut off the part where I was being called. So yeah, sorry about that. I'm just gonna tell you that. Anyway, so below average here, but this climatology is not next year, most likely. It's above average. Below. So it's kind of weird because that means less in the main development region. But you know what that means. <laughs> but it's above here, that means more here and here, which means more heading land, which is bad. But again, this is not 2020. This is not 2021. This is the climate policy. It's nothing for about what it just And now you see really warming up. So yeah, you really see it warming up. Stay cool up, stays cool up here. Really warms up here. Really warm here, warms up here. So yeah, this is most likely, I think this is a good setup for 2021. Look at that La Nina. This year has been an incredibly strong La Nina. Look how strong this La Nina is, especially like seriously. Negative two to, to three degrees and even some isolated spots. A negative five and negative four degrees. It's crazy. We're not getting good agreement on how on how this is gonna go. But but pretty much none are showing though. Yeah. Anyway. Is Lonnie and Sony and us and neutral? So, now these, okay, so this, so the, the dynamic average is not that important. The console is not that important. The statistic average takes all the models and statistics them. So we see it, so in around, um, so when we get to April, May, and June, we go into a neutral. And then we're on a staying on a La Nina side neutral, and then we start to go back in January and June, August, September, back to a La Nina. And you see, most of the models we see, like if we look here, we only have a very little bit showing a tiny bit showing up El Nino, and a very little bit showing up, and a little bit showing up, and so a neutral side. And so, and uh, El Nino side, yes, yeah, so yeah. What I mean is, we have very little showing an El Nino, very little showing an Enzo side El Nino, most showing a uh, La Nina and Enzo side, Enzo neutral side, La Nina. So, yeah, we, this is not that important. The climatology landfall. This is my main part of the video. We're getting into landfalls now. I don't know what all hurricanes. I hope it doesn't mean every single hurricane in the hurricane season. Because if that happens, then it won't be pretty. We can tell you that. But the landfall, the most important part about a hurricane season is forecasting the landfalls. It's not for, it's the most important part of the hurricane season. It's not really knowing how many storms are going to go out to sea and stuff like that. That's not really the most important part. Really, the most important part is forecasting how many storms are going to hit land and those probabilities because they are hitting land, whether it's islands like in the Caribbean, whether it's Cuba, whether it's the USA, it is hitting land. It is a threat to people, property, and life. We need to practice. So, 
So we have in regions 1 to 11, the entire USA. Chance of a TS hitting it, 79%. Chance of a Category 1 2 hurricane hitting it, 68%. Chance of a Category 3, 4, or 5, 52%. You see that? A 52% chance of next year the USA getting hit by a major hurricane. And it looks like the Florida Peninsula has an increased chance. Miami Dade, Tampa, Jacksonville, and places around it. Florida Peninsula, South Florida, Central Florida. You have an increased risk of getting hit next year. This year, you didn't have that because of the ridges and how the highs were set up. It's not going to be like that next year, most likely. You're going to have an increased chance of getting hit by those systems, which is very bad. So, yeah, all hurricanes, 84% chance. Name storms. Ben, I, I don't know what it means by name storms. Maybe it means like 97% of the name storms are going to hit. Oh, oh, wait, no, I put that wrong. Hopefully it doesn't do that. Gulf Coast, regions one to four. 59% chance of a TS hitting it. Uh, uh, category 1 to 2. Um, 42% chance. And major hurricane, 30% chance. 60% chance for all hurricanes. 83% for name storms. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, next. Florida plus East Coast. Range 5 to 11. 50% chance of TS, 44% chance of Category 1 and 2, 31% chance of Category 3, 4, 5. Uh, all Hurricanes, 61% chance. Name Storms, 81% chance. Well, I'm going to watch that when I'm done with this. <laughs> Caribbean. Uh, oh, and promotion on Prom Caribbean. And again, this is for landfalls. This chart is for landfalls. So when it says Caribbean, it means places in the Caribbean. For example, the Yucatan, parts of Mexico. Uh, Cuba, um, and Dominican Republic, and some other places. So it means so so this this chart is only for landfalls. So when it says Caribbean, it means landfall chances for land masses, islands, and places and countries in the Caribbean, such as landfalls in Cuba or Mexico, Yucatan places. So it means landfalls. So it means chances of landfall on places in the Caribbean, like land masses or where people live in crap wars and crap and all that stuff. Anyway, TS, 82% chance of hitting. Category 1 to 2, 57% chance. Category 3, 4, 5, 42% chance. All hurricanes, 75% chance. Name storms, 96%. So, table 2 lists climatology strikes for the hurricane season. Entire falling tropical storms. Okay, oh, so I was just saying. Here it is. Um, okay, I'm not going to look at that yet. I want to show you that on the landfall probability website. You could have already caught that, but I hope you didn't. Well, first we're going to go to Camp Sips model. So currently we're, plus the Aramont, currently we're in a very strong uh, La Nina. Um, very warm waters in the... Atlantic Ocean. And again, if it we're gonna you know how a lot of storms hit the US this year, we're gonna have a similar setup next year. Where a lot of storms that form are most likely going to hit land somehow and whether it's the USA, Caribbean or other places, it's most likely going to hit land. We're in a setup where that will most likely happen again, and of course, we will have some systems that are fish storms and don't affect any land at all. Of course, we always do. Anyway, so we're going to go plus six months of June. We're still in a La Nina, most likely. Um, but yeah, La Nina starts to weaken. We see still warm waters in the Atlantic, and by November, we are, it looks like, in a La Nina side neutral. And again, yeah. landfall probabilities. State probabilities, we're going to start with. So, 
So, here we go. Text, okay, so Florida is the highest chance this year. Last year, Louisiana, we already, like, we had, when we had, we had this chart last year, and Louisiana was the highest, by far. So, we were kind of already expecting a lot of hurricanes in Louisiana last year, because we had, when we had a chart for 2020 last, uh, 2019 December, um, Louisiana is the um, highest chance. Anyway. But now Florida has the highest chance. There's a 51% chance of getting hit by a hurricane. This is not tropical storms. This is hurricane and a major hurricane. It's just that. And a major hurricane, highest uh, 21% chance. Oh, never mind. Oh, I saw Louisiana has the highest chance. That's funny. I thought it did. Oh no, I'm saying you have 20, um, 2018. I think. Sorry, sorry about that. Anyway, so Louisiana actually had it, but Louisiana. Now I don't know why we had a 68 percent chance for Florida last year because it pretty much didn't get hit by any hurricane. It didn't even get landfall, which likely will happen this year. Well, 2021. New York, if I can find it, 9% chance. Last year, you had a 14% chance. A little lower, but I think you will get hit this year. Next year, I mean. If I say this year, I mean next year. Texas, it looks like you're going to click ahead. No, Louisiana has a way lower chance than last year, down by 13%. We hope they don't get hit next year, but I can't promise anything. And again, I can't control the weather. I wish I could, though. Maine only has a 1% chance of getting hit. And less than a 1% chance of a major hurricane. Less than 1% chance of a major hurricane last year. Yeah, so. Person. What the heck was that? Okay, um... Ignore that, please ignore that. That was scary, but hopefully we ignore that. And again, he's in a completely different part of the US than I am. Anyway, uh so you yeah, not all the not all well maybe maybe is every single state a lower chance? I need to see. Mm-mm, because some states are the exact same. I think every state is a lower chance than last year. Oh well, North Carolina went down a lot. Well, they 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 have the same. Shit, okay. Uh, it looks like every single state went down except some, which stayed the same. Yeah, I can guarantee Maine will get hit by a major hurricane next year. It most likely won't if it doesn't. My mind's blown. What? No, I don't want to say it was. Oh, historical probabilities. What the heck am I looking at? Oh, that's historical probability. They didn't go down. They're historical. Oh, but that's what we use to make these. My bad. So, this chart is different here because we have sections for probability of one or more named storms tracking within 50 miles, probability of one or more hurricanes tracking within 50 miles, probability of one or more major hurricanes tracking within 50 miles, probability of one or more named storms tracking within 100 miles, probability of one or more hurricanes tracking within 100 miles, probability of one or more major hurricanes tracking within 100 miles. Um, so, we're going to start with U.S. Virgin Islands. Where we have about a 45 to 49% chance. Oh, UK Virgin Islands. No, I don't. That's it. US Virgin Islands. Um, 49% and then 24 of a hurricane. 8 of a hurricane. Now we're going to go all the way to the Bahamas. 87% chance of a tropical storm. 61 of uh, hurricane. 60. 36 of a major hurricane and 92 of 100 miles, 69 of a hurricane, 
hundred of a hurricane. Cuba, eighty-six percent chance tropical storm, sixty percent chance of a hurricane, thirty-three percent chance of a major hurricane. So yeah, you can actually look at that. So yeah. And again, this is a hurricane uh, predictor.com landfall properties. This is Colorado State University. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna feature a county, I guess. Uh, it's gonna be in Florida. It's gonna be by Tampa, I guess. I don't even see. I really, and I don't, I forgot. What, okay, what the heck? Uh, okay, I'm gonna, oh, I forgot. You know, no, let's just do, hold on. I, I'm not stupid. I used to know that. I just forgot. I'm sorry. Believe me, I did forget. Hillsboro. Oh, well, that's um, pretty high, actually. One or more landfall in the region, 31%, 14.3. And then we just have an 8.2. An intense means major. Now, Hillsboro itself. Nope. 50 regional data. Chances of an intense um, hurricane making around, making landfall around that county. 98.9. That 98.8% for hurricane. Not over 99.9% for tropical storm in the next year. So yeah, that region, that's our feature. Now for the county itself. Yeah. So you have a 90, uh, yeah, 50, okay, so yeah, you can look at that. Oh, anyway, wait, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did smash the like button, shout out to, um, Previs. See you guys next time. Good. Bye! This was a long